What's up guys, Blazin here. Today, we're just gonna go through a few bit, bits of news. First things first, we're gonna... We're gonna address the elephant in the room. Plarium... Plarium pay points. Not Plarium play points. They're Plarium pay points. Um, I think this is totally garbage. Um, not something that I would be chasing. I mean, I've, I've heard content creators out there that are saying it's gonna take eight years or 800 days, some crap like that. It's unless we're doing events where we're going to be earning a thousand play points or pay points per event. This is uh, this is out of the scope. I, I, I does not concern me. Um, you know the the end game rules out there. Yeah, they'll get another shiny Lego in a couple of weeks, but that's yeah. I, I don't care about that. So. That's just another pay-to-play aspect that they have. Next, uh, I want to go through the Amazon Game Drop. So, if you've already claimed it, um, you'll know that you get, I believe it was 1 million silver, 500 energy, multi-battles, and a 3-day XP. I mean, it's part of something you already get, you know, if you're using Prime. So, getting that little extra goodie is great. Um, I think the only thing that would be really worth it is the Savage Gear, and if you're an early enough game account, Gandalf. Other than that, nothing else really interests. Then we have a 10x coming up this week, and um, we got some, some good, interesting champs. Uh, we got Thalesia. Great for Hydra, great for um, Faction Wars. Um, I think she could have had a little more clothing in the area right here, but, um, you know. Uh, best part about her is she places a big version, decreased defense for two turns, and it's on a three turn cooldown. So, she, that makes her very, very versatile in a lot of areas of the game. Um, and then she can increase the duration of all debuffs on the enemy by one turn if I believe Hex is out there. Um, and then applies uh, a debuff spread, one random debuff if Hex is out there, that's what it was. Um, but I use her in Faction Wars, she's great. Then we have uh, Sinatia, part of the uh, the duo for a uh, Blender team. A1 attacks all enemies, places an extra hit if the target is under 50%. A2 will basically equalize and heal everybody. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, that's the A3. The A2 will attack one enemy and put the target's uh, skills on cooldown, heals the ally with the lowest HP by 25%, and then the A3 will uh, equalize everybody's HP. Um, that actually, when I was going through the first time, kind of saved me a few times for um, my faction wars. Then we have Skullcrown. Right? Uh, Taps all enemies, places an extra hit, the target's more than 50%, so if you were doing a blender comp, you would want her hitting first, and you want her in position 3, and then you would put Sinatia in position 2. Her A2, uh, attacks all enemies, places a 25% weaken for 2 turns, that can smack very hard. Um, and then she places an unkillable for herself when she drops below 20% AP. Right, let's see. The next one is Demon Spawn, and we have Magma. The um, before Empowerment was available, was debatably one of the best arena nukers because he was HP based, so it was a little more difficult to kill him. Um, but since Empowerment and Epics don't have Empowerments, he has fallen off quite a bit. But he can place a decrease defense on his A1 and has 100% instead of if the target is under HP burn. Um, you don't really want to put HP burn because his A2 will attack all enemies uh, twice if the target does not have HP burn. And then his A3 uh, will apply a debuff spread, taking two random debuffs and placing on all enemies under HP burn. Um, so you wouldn't really use that, you would just fill them as a nuke. You know? Um, then we have into the legendaries, you have Hefrak. Um, this guy just smacks. I have him on uh, my son's account. 
uh, A1 places an extra hit if the attack is critical, so you want to build him with 100% crit rate, but uh, his A3 gives him increased attack and increased crit rate, so you can always build him with 70% and just uh, use this first, right? And because he gets an extra turn. Then you have attacks all enemies, um, places an extra hit with targets less than 50% after the first hit. Each hit will ignore 15% of the target's defense, so this smacks really hard. Um, even on my son's account where it's like a 3 million player, player, three million player power, um, he can still go into gold pad and, and clear just about anything he goes against. And then we are going into Dark Elves, and we have a 10x for Foley. Um, Funny story, Foley used to actually be my stun target for clan boss. <laughs> he um, he brings a decreased defense on the A1, he brings a leech on the A2, and he blocks revive on his A3. Um, used to be used in arena quite often, but with stone skin and reaction, it's not as easy anymore to um, block revive somebody. So, uh, But the reason he worked on my clan boss team is because he's immune to CC, so you can use stuns, freeze, sleeps, provokes, and it's booked down to a 3-turn cooldown, so I just made sure that I had an ally protection on him and a shield, and he would take the sun, and I would last my 50 turns. It uh, helped me get into a 2 key nightmare, uh, ultra nightmare, sorry. Then we have, uh, nope, wrong, size. We have a 10x for Trunda. Um, great gen. Uh, she has fallen off the meta recently. Um, she's still great. I use her in my 3v3 arena teams, but attacks one enemy two times is a 50% chance of placing a stun on the second hit. Um, you don't want to build her with any accuracy. Uh, her kit works better with that accuracy, um, mostly for the end game. Um, attacks one enemy, and then attacks all of the enemies with a second hit, dealing 60% of the damage inflicted from the first hit. So there's some weird funky coding on Hydra with this, and it, um, depending on the heads you get, will um, <laughs> almost like one key for you. Um, and then her A3 attacks all enemies, has a 70% chance of placing a stun for one turn, Places an HP burn debuff for two turns on enemies under stun debuffs. Places an extra hit on enemies not under stun. So, you really want her built without any accuracy. You want to take that extra hit because she smacks. And our last one is my boy, Leorius. Now, I don't have him on this account, but I do have him on my ult account. And he is a beast, literally. Um, A1 attacks an enemy two times. Each hit has a 60% chance of placing a decreased defense. Damage increased by 20% if the target has less than 60% HP. A2 attacks all enemies two times. And there's a passive effect where he's immune to any sort of CC while this ability is not on cooldown. So in Arena, if you were to do... Um, a preset for him, you'd have him actually start with his A3 if you're going, and then A2 to kind of clean everything else up. Unless he's taken enough hits, then you want the A2. And then his A3 attacks all enemies, has an 80% chance of placing a true fear debuff for one turn. Before attacking, has an 80% chance of placing a 25% weaken on all enemies for two turns. So, great ability. Um, I think I have mine built with like 200 accuracy, and that was because that's how the gear came. Um, but it, it wasn't it wasn't a stat I seek out for. So, let's see. Uh, we've discussed the scan points, we've discussed the prime loot, we've discussed the 10x. Um, I don't think there was anything else there. I think the only other thing we're going to talk about now is the fusion. So, so we have the Pythion fusion coming up. He's a fragment fusion, which means he'll be a little more obtainable uh, to get. 
Uh, his kit reads well. Um, we have an aura, resist all, uh, ally resist and all battle by 60%, so not the best, but not the weakest. We have um, a passive. Allies receive 5% less damage from uh, skills for each buff on them. Stacks up to 25%. So if you have 5 buffs out there, um, you know, like a Necret protecting somebody, a uh, Stone Skin, a Shield, um, you know, pair that with like a Duchess passive, um, that can be pretty good. Um, I wonder if it stacks with the Duchess passive. So if you did like a um, like a risk with Duchess and a shield set, or Duchess and a um, bolster set, and then you had an ally protect or something. I, I'm I'm sure someone out there will find some arena team out there that's going to be really hard to beat with this guy. Um, and then you have, let's start with his A1. Attacks one enemy two times, heals an ally with the lowest HP by 5% of this champion's max HP. Decent. Just means we get a heal over time, so it's going to be great for um, faction wars. A2. Removes all debuffs from the allies, then places a heal on them by 10% of their max HP. Heals each ally by an extra 5% of their max HP for each debuff removed from them. Also places a block buffs for two turns, and it's booked down to a three turn cooldown. That is an amazing ability uh, for the fact that it's a three turn block buffs cooldown. The heal is great too. The cleanse is great too. Um, it'll be great for the clan boss. And then we have his A3 revives all dead allies with 50% HP, 50% turn meter, and then places a 25% strengthen on them for two turns. Books down to a four turn cooldown. That is a replication of Duchess, if I ever saw one. She uh, she places, I believe it's a Veil and a Shield, um, and he is going to place the Strength and the Increased Turn Meter, so um, I, I do think that he's going to make it into some teams now. <laughs> his his kid in the beginning didn't read as much, but now I, I can see it, um, especially him being um, Force Affinity. I think uh, I, I think he just may. Um, but that said, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks, guys. Bye.